Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to use the new Photoshop Elements 2021 Perfect Landscape feature to come in and add a new sky into your landscape. And I'll then show you how to take this even further inside of expert mode and use your own sky images just like that. Okay, now if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos. And if you really want to learn how to use this great new program, look for my complete training course for Photoshop Elements 2021. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's start this project off just by getting rid of all of this other stuff over here, all those layers, and take us right back to just the beginning image right here. Okay, and the first thing we need to do is to go over into guided mode right here. And then in guided mode, we're in the special edits section. There it is, and click on perfect landscape. This brings up the new Perfect Landscape Guided Edit. Now there are quite a few features in here. You can crop an image down if you want to. You can straighten an image out if it's crooked. We don't need either of those for this. You can remove haze if you have any. There's no haze in here, so we can leave that one alone as well. So none of that is needed for this particular picture, although these all work very, very well if you have those problems in your image. You can then choose a new sky. Now notice we only have just a small number of skies here. And this is the real problem with the program is you may not see what you want in here. You may have a better picture someplace else and I'll show you how to do that. But first we have to go through this whole process, finish it off this way. Once that's done, we can then change that sky over in expert mode. I'll just use the top option right here. Click on any one of these. It's going to go through, make a layer mask for us, put in this new sky background, do some other little adjustments in here. And once that's done, we'll see that new sky showing up. As soon as the new sky is in, there are a few more options in here that we can use to improve this image a little bit. Okay, here's our new sky image. That's all taken care of. Now notice we have opacity and brightness down here. Now what this does is it actually blends this in with another background. It does two things when it replaces the sky. One, of course, is the new sky picture. The second one is right below that. It puts in this gradient as well. So we have two new layers, a gradient layer and the sky layer. And that gives you some adjustment in here over how the sky looks. You can also adjust the brightness in here. There you go, a bit of a brightness adjustment on that one. There's another option on here, auto match color tone. Sometimes this helps a little bit. I went ahead and did that. It kind of brightened up our foreground in here to help match it with the brightness of the background. There's a move tool here, which allows you to move your cloud picture around just a little bit. You can't go too far. See, there's the bottom of that cloud. So it allows a little bit of motion. It depends upon the size of the image. So you can you know, try to get things looking a little bit better. And I think over here, that's not too bad over here someplace. There we go. Now the shift edge down here is going to shift the edge of the layer mask. So if I pull this over, it's going to pull that layer mask in a little bit. So it's kind of cutting into the edge in here. If I move it to the left hand side, it's going to take that out further. If I go clear to the left, you see we begin to see a halo around there. So I'll leave that over here just a little bit in here to the right hand side. Now the refined edge brush down here, this is not the same thing as the refine edge over in expert mode. That refine edge actually refines a selection around your main subject. In here, all this is is simply black paint on your layer mask, which means that if you paint into your image, this is going to remove part of the image. Let me just show you that. I'll go here. I have two options, add and subtract. You can adjust the size and the opacity of your brush. Now the brush that's used this is the last brush that you're using inside of the expert mode. So if you change your brush over there to something different, like a square brush or something or a specialty brush, it's going to use that brush here. So make sure that you're using just a regular brush and it should be a soft edge brush. It has to be selected over in expert mode before you get to this point. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll do add. Here's our brush. So bring the brush size up quite a ways. You can see here, it's not refining the edge. It's simply painting in onto our layer mask. If I do subtract, same thing, it's simply painting in right there. Now you can use the Control Z keyboard shortcut to back out of that, so you have that option. So all this is doing is painting black or painting white onto your layer mask, and that's better done in expert mode. Last option down here is a spot healing brush. You can use this to clean up your photograph if you need to. I personally prefer to do this at the beginning of the project instead of at the end down here, but that's okay. So. We're all set. Let's now click on next and we'll see how we can take this even further over here in expert mode right there. There are a couple of cloud pictures that I found in here. I'll just minimize those, get those out of the way. There we go. And then over here, here's our new layer structure that was made with that perfect landscape. Let me show you what this is all about. You'll see here we have 
a couple of things in here. We have the actual layer mask up here, and this is inside of a group. The layer mask is on the group layer, and then inside we have our lighting adjustment here. We have the new background clouds here, and there's that gradient that we looked at. So we have those two backgrounds and our lighting adjustment, and that's all controlled in this one group right here. And then above this, we have a combined layer up here, which combines all of this stuff into a new layer. Now, the first thing you want to do is to hide this top layer. There we go, just get rid of that one. We can now show or hide all of our effects down here. Here's everything in this group. There it is. And here's our original photograph here with that layer mask hidden. Notice on this layer, this has that tone adjustment that we did where we lightened it up just a little bit. That's on that one layer here. And above that, let's bring back in this whole layer structure. Here we go. So here's our overall lighting control right here. Not a whole lot happening in there, just a little bit. And again, here's the new clouds and there's that new sky gradient. Here it is with just the sky gradient on there. Now in this one, this is a layer adjustment, so you can double click on that, and this brings up your brightness contrast controls here. You can adjust that some more right here if you want to. That is available to you. But let's see how we can come in and put our own cloudscape in here instead of this cloudscape. Now again, for this to work, make sure that you have that top layer hidden, and then click on our top layer here. It's a hidden layer, but click on the layer anyway. I have some more clouds right here. I'll just float this window like that. Now if you don't have floating windows, Go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and right there, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Make sure that, that is checked, and you can then float your window. This just makes it real easy to grab that background layer and drop it in over here. Now I'll hide that one. Now this is not the right size. That's okay. I'm just going to resize this. I'll put it up here, upper left-hand corner. Notice how it's kind of snapping right against that edge right there. That's because over here under View, and under Snap 2, it's set to Snap to Document Bounds and also Layers. It should be like that already. That's the defaults. But there we go. Okay, now I can grab the bottom right-hand corner. I'll drag this out until it fits. I'll go just a little bit larger like that. Then I have a little bit of adjustment movement ability in here. Choose OK. Now, whenever you're working with adding in a new sky like this, notice that we have a bit of a perspective happening. Everything is kind of smaller down here towards the horizon, and it gets larger as you go up here. If I move this up, we can see here's the horizon right here for this photograph. So to make this look as accurate as possible, pull this down until it's just on that horizon in your photograph. It should be just about right there. Okay, here's our sky. It's in position. Now all you have to do is take this and drag it down below this lighting layer, this brightness contrast layer, but above their background. So I'll pull it straight down. And there we go. There's our new sky placed in here above there. So now you can close or hide their background, and we can even then blend this into their gradient if you want to. Just grab your opacity, and you can then do some of that adjustment in there. So you have all of those kinds of controls are still available, even though we're working with a new cloud layer here. And that gives you a lot more control. Let's just take a look at this layer mask up here just for a moment. If you hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask, it takes you inside of the actual layer mask right here. And as you can see, it's actually a very good layer mask. It does a really nice job, real clean job on these layer masks in here. So what this is doing is it's showing everything in here inside of the sky area, and that's all contained inside of this one layer group right there. Now to get out of that, just come down here, click on your background layer. There we go. And you're back to your regular view. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also click on share and click on subscribe as well. Take a look at my channel for a bunch more Photoshop Elements videos. And if you really want to learn how to use this new Photoshop Elements 2021 program, take a look at my complete training course. And the link for that is right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.